Welcome to the tutorial series on basic electrical engineering made simple. Under this basic concepts, in this session, we shall take up electrical power and energy. Friends, first let us see what is energy in general. You know that energy is defined as the ability to do work. Then what is electrical energy? An electrical energy is the energy stored in charge due to its position in the electric field. In fact, very shortly you will come to know that this electrical energy is a stored potential energy. Then what is an electric field? Electric field is the force field around a charged particles. So with these basic definitions, we can understand electrical energy and power very easily. When we say that the electrical energy is the stored energy in the charge placed in an electrical field, how is that the energy and the charge are related? To understand this, consider the two charges plus Q1 and plus Q2 placed in an electric field as shown in figure at a distance D1. Let us assume that the charge Q1 is fixed in position and it is not allowed to move, whereas the charge Q2 is allowed to move. If so, we know that because the charges are of the same polarity, there is going to be a repulsive force acting on the charges and that force can be found out by Coulomb's law. And we know that the Coulomb's law states that the force between the two charges is directly proportional to the product of the two charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Now, you understand that there is a repulsive force acting on the two charges and charge Q1 is fixed, charge Q2 is movable, but we say that Q2 is at a distance D1. How can it be possible? Though there is a repulsive force acting on Q2, it is in the position D1 because there could be some external force acting on it to keep it in that position. Understand this. Friends, now I will ask you a very interesting question. Now we know that charge Q2 is held in position because some external force is acting on it to keep it in that position T1. Now suppose if that winding force is removed, what do you expect? You see that if the binding force acting on Q2, keeping it in position D1, if it is removed, then charge Q2 suddenly will fly to infinity because there is a force of repulsion acting on it. And because of the position of the charge at D1, it has some stored potential energy and if the binding force which is keeping it in the position D1 is removed, then the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and it will fly to infinity. And at infinity, the force acting on it is zero and if we want to bring that charge Q2 from the position infinity to D1, then we have to externally do some work on the charge to bring it to position D1. This you have to understand. To understand the concept of 
voltage or potential difference let us bring in another charge q3 at a distance d2 from q1 and d1 is lesser than d2 or d2 is greater than d1 and the repulsive force on q2 if it is f1 it is proportional to q1 into q2 by d1 square whereas a repulsive force on q3 is f2 and is proportional to q1 into q3 by d2 square and definitely f1 is greater than f2 because d1 is smaller than d2. Now, if you look at the stored potential energy, you find that the charge Q2 is at a higher potential compared to that of Q3 because of the difference in the distance. And another very interesting point that you have to understand that if we want to move Q3 to a position of Q2, the charge is moving from a lower potential point to a higher potential point. Therefore, we have to put in external work on the charge. Whereas, if Q2 is to be moved to a position Q3, it is moving from a higher potential point to a lower potential point. Therefore, the work is done by the charge. In both you know, cases, the concept is there is a work done either by external force or by the charge. Therefore, the potential difference or the voltage is related to the charge moment and because of the position of the charge in a force field, it has a stored potential energy and between Q2 and Q3, there is a potential difference and that potential difference or voltage is equivalent to work done per charge. Friends, now we are in a position to define electrical voltage and electrical energy. First, let us define voltage or potential difference. Voltage or potential difference is defined as the work done per unit charge or V is equal to work done divided by Q or work done is equal to V into Q. But we know that the electric current is defined as the rate of charge flowing across the cross section or current I is equal to dQ by dt or average current I is equal to Q divided by T or Q is equal to I into T. So, if we substitute this value of Q in the equation of work done, we get work done is equal to V into I into T and the unit of work done is joules and in terms of electrical energy, the unit is watt seconds and one joule is equal to one watt second. Therefore, the different units of electrical energy E is equal to V into I into T watt seconds. If V is in volts, I is in amperes and T is in seconds, the unit of energy is watt second. If V is in volts and I is in amperes and T is in hours, the unit of electrical energy is watt hour and 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 1000 watt hours. Now, let us define electrical power. What is power? Power in general is defined as the rate of doing work. In terms of electrical quantities, it can be defined as the work done in unit time. Therefore, electrical power P is equal to work done divided by T 
or we know that work done is equal to v into i into t therefore p is equal to v into i into t divided by t and hence we get the equation for power p is equal to v into i and the unit of power is watts. Using Ohm's law we can get three forms of equations of electrical power and they are p is equal to v into i watts or p is equal to i squared r watts or p is equal to v squared divided by r watts. And the higher units of power is a kilowatt and one kilowatt is equal to 1000 watts and one megawatt is equal to 10 to the power of 6 watts. If you understand these concepts of voltage, current, power and energy, we can apply these concepts in solving numerical examples. To emphasize the concepts that we have learnt, let us consider a simple example wherein we are required to find the power delivered or power absorbed by the sources and also we are required to show that the total power delivered is equal to the total power absorbed. If you consider the network shown in figure, I1 is the current flowing through branch 1, I2 is the current flowing through branch 2 and by applying Kirchhoff's current law to junction B, we get current flowing through branch 3 as I1 minus I2. Now, if we write the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the loop ABDA, we get minus 5I1 minus 10I2 plus 10 is equal to 0, which yields equation 1 that is 5I1 plus 10I2 is equal to 10. Similarly, if we write the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the loop BCDB, we get minus 5 into bracket I1 minus I2 minus 5 plus 10 I2 is equal to 0, which yields minus 5 I1 plus 15 I2 is equal to 5. Friends, if you have doubts in writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equations, I suggest you go through my tutorial video on Kirchhoff's laws. Now, by solving equation 1 and equation 2, we get current in the branch 1 equal to 0.8 amperes, current in the branch 2 equal to 0.6 amperes and current in branch 3 is equal to 0.2 amperes. Now, these are the true directions and note that the current of 0.8 amperes is leaving the positive terminal of the source of 10 volts, whereas the current of 0.2 amperes is entering the positive terminal of the source of 5 volts. So, if you understand these aspects, you will be able to identify whether the source is delivering power or the source is absorbing power. Now, you see that if the current leaves the positive terminal of the source, power is delivered by it, whereas if the current enters the positive terminal of the source, power is absorbed by it. Also, in any network, you must understand that the power delivered by the sources should be equal to the power absorbed by the resistances and also source. Now, if you find the power delivered by 10 volt source, you find that 10 into I1 equal to 10 into 0.8 which will give us 8 watts. Similarly, if you want to find the total power absorbed in the circuit, you see that P absorbed is equal to 5 volts into 0.2, this is the power absorbed by the voltage source of 5 volts plus 0.8 square into 5 plus 0.6 square into 10 plus 0.2 square into 5 
totally it gives us 8 watts which means the power delivered by the source is equal to power absorbed by the other elements of the network and this fact if you understand you will be able to identify and find the power delivered and the power absorbed in any given circuit. Friends, I hope you have clearly understood the concept of voltage, current, power and energy. You also have understood when the source will absorb power or when the source will deliver power. And remember, in any network, the total power delivered should be equal to total power absorbed. Thank you for watching.